welcome. Well, today we are accounting to the people, and that's exactly what we are going to do. If ever you had any doubt or if you believed about all this quote-unquote incompetency business, it should have been erased from your head. As at yesterday, the president indeed uh, launched his book, uh, quite a sizable book, and they've listed numerous and numerous and numerous of positive things which the president and the government have done for Mother Ghana. So if you are wondering, you know, what the president do, AIAE, dead goats and everything, that should be gone. Schools have doubled, school places have doubled, roads have doubled. I mean, what more can we ask for? And so we are here to discuss as to, you know, is it the value for money? Because one may say, yes, you did all that, but how much did it cost you? You know, was there value for money? But I'm sure in there somewhere there was value for money. My name is Nana Sakwa. This is PM Express, and I am talking to Sydney Casley Hayford, who's a financial analyst and a member of Occupy Ghana. I'm also talking to George Lowe, MP for North Die. George, you're welcome, Sydney. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, uh, Guys, you, you want me to go for a break and come back, or should I continue? Okay, I'm going to take a quick break. When I come back, we are accounting to the people. In accounting to the people, uh, we're just going to, for those of you who may have missed uh, the, uh, the seminar yesterday, if I may call it, just have a little peep what the uh, president said. Vocational training has been invested in 2015. Technical and vocational training is very important um, because if you look at the job market, increasingly um, businesses are looking for middle level technicians. Unfortunately, if you look at most of our tertiary institutions, they are producing BA, uh, business administration graduates and other humanities. And so we need to strengthen technical and vocational education. And that's why we invested as much as 65 million uh, there. Um, so far, we've provided more than 150 million to various institutions and associations to promote technical and vocational training. This has been done under the COTVET program. Um, and some of the beneficiaries are the Ghana National Association of Garages has benefited from the grants of 150 million. It's a grant that is given to them to expand training of their trainees. The Kwame Kuma Investor of Science and Technology Jewelry Design and Technical Center has also benefited. This is a center that is doing magnificent work. It's training jewelers to be able to take our gold and turn it into jewelry so that instead of us selling or exporting raw gold, we export jewelry because the value addition when you create jewelry is much higher than if you export the gold raw. And um, one of the graduates of this uh, center made some gold cufflinks for me. And I tell you, if you see the cufflinks, they are better than any made in Switzerland or Dubai or anywhere. You know. Under tertiary education, we're doing rigorous human resource development uh, linked to our transformation agenda. Infrastructure development in tertiary schools is going on. For those of you who saw a few uh, weeks ago, I commissioned the new campus for the University of Health and Allied Sciences um, in the Volta region. It's a magnificent uh, campus and um, it will promote um, tertiary education in that part of the country. The university is going to produce uh, doctors, physician assistants and uh, many other health professionals who would man our health facilities. We also are working on the University of Energy and Natural Resources in the Bronga Hafu uh, region. There's a new campus in Doma which we have started and we are going to put in uh, more infrastructure so that it becomes uh, a campus worthy of this university. But the university, you know, of course took off. These two universities are universities that were dear to the hearts of Professor Mills and um, we are expanding the facilities there so that they can take up more of the students. Um, we have invested $37 million 
in distance learning facilities across 10 regional capitals. Distance learning is becoming very popular because a lot of people want to continue their education at the tertiary level but are working and cannot leave their jobs to go and do school full time. And so we're making more opportunity available for people to work and learn at the same time. And so currently, as I speak, work is ongoing on two teaching hospitals, four regional hospitals, 14 district hospitals, and over 30 health centers. Five additional polyclinics have been completed, and another 15 polyclinics for the central and greater Accra regions have just been approved by parliament. In addition, 1,260 chips compounds have been built across the length and breadth of the country. We've increased health training institutions in order to train more qualified people across the country from 25. There were only 25 um, health training institutions um, in 2005, and this has been increased to 95 in 2015. And so you see that there are more nursing and midwifery training schools that have opened. There are physician assistance training schools that have been opened, and so many others. 2,861 communities have been connected to the national grid in the last three years. And so our access to electricity in Ghana is 76%. It means that 76% of Ghanaians have access to electricity. And this is the second highest in sub-Saharan Africa after South Africa. South Africa is the only country that is ahead of us in terms of access. Um, these are the interventions we are making to increase power generation. And so these various uh, uh, projects are ongoing. Um, the steam component of T2, that is the Tico plant in Abwazi, is 110 megawatts. It's completed and it's awaiting commissioning. And then there's the car power badge, 225. And there's the controversial Ameri plant that has generated a lot of discussion. Uh, 250 megawatts, and this is the Kontema plant. The Kontema plant is a VRA plant that we have built ourselves, and um, it's going to add another 220 megawatts to our generation. All these are at various stages of completion, and so when they are completed and they add more power, then it will reduce the effect of the doomso that we are currently feeling. We have a solar plant in Navrongo, which is providing uh, two megawatts for now. But there's another private solar plant that has come into operation that is providing 20 megawatts. And that is not listed here, but it's working. It was commissioned a few weeks ago. And then uh, we are expanding the Thermal Thema plant, TTP, and that will add another 38 megawatts. And soon on Asogli, I'm sure a lot of you have heard about Asogli. We are building Asogli phase two. And that's only phase two is 360 megawatts. And 100, about 110 megawatts of it will be ready by December. And so if all these plants come into stream, then we would have more generation to be able to meet the demand in, in Ghana. The one before, um, this was this before. That. That's the car power ship that sailed from uh, Turkey somewhere and was said to have been lost in Ivorian waters and all kinds of things. It has arrived, that's it, it's birthed in, in Tema and it's ready to start working. <laughs> then uh, this is the Kontema plant. We did commissioning this week of the first unit and it is working, it's in, it's in good working order. So the, that unit will give us about 100 plus megawatts. And so it's, it's going through the commissioning phase and then these are, apart from the emergency power we need to solve the doom so that is uh, overcome the demand, we need to plan ahead to make sure that we don't find ourselves in this situation again. And so we've signed MOUs with independent power producers to put in additional generation between now and 2020, that is 2015 to 2020. And so there's 110 megawatts TEI plant then there's another 186 megawatt T4 power plant supposed to come to Abwaji. And then we've signed IPP, uh, IPP agreements with, for 3,060 megawatts. So if you combine all that, we will come to about 3,500 megawatts.
Well, thank you very much for staying. Uh, now, check this out. Now, this is pages and pages and pages and pages of positive news, which we often don't get. George, uh, let me start with you. I mean, would you say, you know, a section, maybe not all, but a section of Ghanaians are probably being blind or deliberately ungrateful? Because, I mean, this is the evidence. And I've, no, I've so far, I haven't heard anyone say, oh, page two is a lie or page three is a lie or page 77 hasn't happened. So are we deliberately being blind or unnecessarily ungrateful? What's happening to us? Well, uh, thank you, Nana, and uh, let me say good evening to our cherished viewers. Uh, of course, good evening to my brother. Mm. Uh, the, the point is very basic. I mean, we, I think the book is, uh, is important because we cannot all be at the same place at the same time. So now the evidence is there. Um, Across, it just tells us that across the length and breadth of the country, things are happening. And so this delays to rest, as you said, this feeling that possibly things are happening only in Accra or only in Kumasi or only in Takradi. The evidence today shows that across all spectrum of our national life, be it health, be it education, be it tourism, be it uh, whatever you want to call it, things are happening. Lives are being transformed. Communities are being transformed. Uh, new opportunities are coming, and we are on a path of growth. George, wh where is the disconnect? I mean, the total number of educational institutions at all levels has risen sharply from 45,447 mm -hmm. in 2008-2009 uh, uh, academic year to 57,270 in the 2014-2015 academic year, representing an increase of about you know 11,823, making 26%. Yet, I mean, like when school reopened, everybody shouting, oh, I can't find the place. I mean, come on, there's 11,000 more schools. So where's the disconnect? Well, I, I, I do not see a disconnect per se. What I see is that we simply are not where we are supposed to be yet. A lot has happened, a lot is happening, but there's still room for a lot more to happen. And that would account for the challenge because if you go back to school enrollment and all that, it's also increased. Mm. But would you say the number of schools we've built is enough to cater for every Ghanaian? The answer simply would be no at this stage. We are progressing steadily. So oh, that is why that is why we say we are on the path of growth. We are we are we are we are we are, we are, we are embarking on a transformational agenda. But you say we are growing steadily. I mean I I would say significantly. I mean twenty six percent is quite significant. Yes. So, I mean, uh, my, my point again is, aren't we complaining too bitterly? Well, you see, this is society. Hmm. And uh, we always say that uh, we are like, like Oliver Twist, we continue asking for more. So society would want to demand more. Simply, we have had a deficit over a long period of time. And so we should expect that we will not use a period of two years, a period of five years to be able to catch up with the demands. I mean, let me give you one practical example, the energy deficit that we've had. I mean, it's simply because for many years, we had assumed that what we have should be enough. We have lived off Akosombo for many years because it catered for our basic needs. Today, we yeah, realize that... Also Akosombo, it's we, 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 overdrafted. Yeah, you know, we, it we, was overdrafted. Yeah, so we, 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 we today, it. what we've done is that we've had to do a lot more at a, uh, at a higher cost, you know, because when we had to act, we didn't. So, so it's all come back home to roost. But the good thing is that this book is demonstrating that we understand the problem and we are trying, we are on the path of fixing it. It's uh, 0560 800 000. 0560 000. Send your WhatsApp messages. You know, you can go on Facebook, look for uh, Joy News, and then send your messages and I'll read them along because this affects us. All. I mean, positively or negatively, let us see how uh, this accountability affects you. I mean, Sydney, mm. <coughs> what more can we say? You elected a government to, you know, deliver the goods. There you go. How many pages? 197, 200, 209, 210 pages of raw delivery. We, we, we can't ask for more.
Amazing stuff. Amazing, amazing stuff. George is waiting for what I'm going to say next. <laughs> Don't worry, today I'm in a good mood. <laughs> um, look, I have been asking for a long time that I think government should, as a matter of priority and transparency, list all projects it has undertaken in its period of time. Tell us how much it has spent on these projects, on these projects and tell us what stage they are as far as these projects are concerned. I think this is an excellent idea. I really do. I think it's an excellent idea. I have learned a lot from glancing through. I haven't really sat down to digest it in detail. But I think that looking at the opportunity and what has been done, I don't see that there's anything wrong in producing a booklet of this nature that we can look at and we can say. The only problem I have is and maybe that's my bias. I'm a numbers person. I don't have enough numbers. I don't know how much the Tamale teaching hospital has cost us and how much it is going to cost us. I don't know how much the School of Allied Health Sciences was budgeted for, how much it has cost, whether it, there has been budget overruns, et cetera, et cetera. But that's my finance side, looking at it. When I look at my development side, all I can say is, there are major issues here that have moved us from point A into point B. And for me, I think we have done significantly well. I have traveled around the country a lot. Um, a lot of the stuff I see in there, I am going to revisit because I haven't seen most of them. Um, and I'm not sure whether I have looked in the right places. But I would like a chance to go back and see where things are. There's a particularly good listing and an index at the end of the booklet. It lists region by region mm. what has been done, whether it's been completed or whether it's in, 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 in a stage, stage of completion. Uh, but it doesn't, it's not, it doesn't specifically say what. It just tells you, like, eastern region, this has been completed, completed, completed. completed. So it would be nice to go and visit some of these things and see it. The, the one thing I would have liked uh, to be taken out are the artist's impression of what certain things are going to end up as. I think that in terms of telling us what has been achieved, an artist's impression is not an achievement. <coughs> Anybody can do a piece of architectural design work and slap it in there. Oh, I disagree with that. There. I disagree with that. You think that the artist's impression is a, is, is, is a project achieved? Yeah, because everything that has been finished started with the artist's impression. It's just okay. that at the time of reporting, maybe that had gone past the artist's impression. So if you are reporting the book, and the project is at the artist's impression stage, you have to tell us. Yeah, but it can't be. This is be. what I intend to build it, for you. It can't be because um, if you go to the power page, you will see the car power barge in its protected area, mm -hmm. situated. And the car power barge only arrived at the beginning of this month. So if you've got that picture in there, then any other artist impression that you have must have predated that because that is the most recent thing that we have. There's even a picture of the Ameri plant. But that's a picture of the Ameri plant, which you would have somewhere, which you can put in. Um, but overall, 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 I think it is an excellent demonstration of what the NDC thinks it has done up until this point. Um, there are other things there that I might say, hey, uh, they should not be taken credit for, 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 for something like that. But that's neither here nor there at this stage. Um, what I like about things like this is, having now done this, having now done this, the pressure is now on the NPP, if they become the next government, to now come and do better than what we have. Mm. Two weeks ago, if you remember, you and I were on this very same program, yeah. and I was asking you to name three or four things that this NDC government has done. Struggling that you could do and you were struggling you couldn't you couldn't figure it out and i remember even the viewers and the listeners pointed out to you that you couldn't list any all right now if you look at this you see quite a lot of significant things um but it it, it still goes there that if you tell me you have built 20 schools 20 schools 20 basic schools my my first reaction is so what you're supposed to build schools you're supposed to make sure that all 
all school going children have somewhere where they can attend and get a decent education. So doing that should only be classified as uh, having met the aspirations or the, or, or the demands of the people of the country. And I don't consider that a significant achievement, if I can make the, that distinction. Yeah. There's a difference between doing what you ordinarily must do and then doing beyond what you ordinarily must do. All right? So I like to make that distinction. And I come back to the question that for me, the challenge to every government in Ghana has to be, what legacy are you leaving for us? I mean, could, could this be, let me stay with you. I mean, I, I, I get what you, I mean, it's like me going to Kosi Chum saying, that, oh, Monday to Friday I came and you know, hosted the show. Well, mm -hmm. that, that's what I hired you to do. Absolutely. However, if for one reason or the other, he, he, he hasn't got access to TV, mm -hmm. and so he doesn't know that I come to work. Well, mm -hmm. that's where our problem has been. I don't know where this abiding area, abiding area. Mm -hmm. Then this becomes justified. So not necessarily to say I've done more than what you asked me to do, but just to say that listen, because you're not aware of what I'm doing, th this is what I've done yeah. so far. And yeah. Just well, it's, to, it's 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 this is um, uh, how do the Christians call it testimony? Anna. Yeah. <laughs> this is testimony, right? Yeah. So it shows that you know um, we have been doing something. Mm. The unfortunate thing is. It should not have got to this point. Okay? It should not have got to this point. There should have been a more consistent demonstration of what is being achieved. And maybe, and, and sometimes when I say these things, I like to step back a little because, one, I don't watch Ghana television. I don't watch GTV. I don't watch GBC 24. Okay? I don't. Um, I, in fact, I hardly watch television. I'm a radio person. You try so, and avoid TV license. Mm, I'll watch the TV license, I won't pay. <laughs> so I'm telling them they can come and arrest me. I have five televisions at home, I won't pay TV license. <laughs> I, I'll go to court and go and challenge it if I have to. But um, because I don't watch television, I don't watch GBC 24 and the, and the state uh, 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 stations, maybe that is why I don't hear and see all of these things. Because maybe that is where, you know, if you're, if you're there, you will hear about it. Because Every once in a while when I do get the opportunity, I'll catch a documentary on something that is being done, some irrigation scheme going on somewhere and that and that. My problem is always though that I watch the documentary and I don't know how old that documentary is. Okay? Because we are still in that realm where we don't have sufficient content. So we keep bringing back old movies and old documentaries and old issues. And, and as I was flicking through the... Uh, the uh, the booklet, the question I'm, I'm, I was asking myself is, are these all in this seven-year era? Or were there some that were before and that have been repeated and brought back into the, in, into the book? I do know that for sure there are those items that, sincerely in my opinion, have been put in there as futuristic things. Which is fine, because it tells you where the mind is going. Like we're talking about Kotoka International Terminal 2, and there's also Kotoka International Terminal 3 mm -hmm. coming up with its interior and its e-cards and stuff like that, which you know is futuristic, okay? But it makes for good vision. But I think that's there, isn't it? I mean, terminal 3? Yeah. No, no, no. The, the, the Terminal 2 is... The Terminal 2 with all this yeah. futuristic thing, I think it's there. I haven't been it's to the in the book. Yeah, yeah, no, it's yeah. in the book, but I mean, I think it's... That's an actual picture. Yeah, yeah, oh, but Terminal 3 is coming up. No, not the Terminal 3. Terminal 3 is coming up. I'm, I'm but talking terminal about... Terminal 2 is... The, I mean, yeah, that's terminal there. 3 is, the new, is, is, you yeah, know, the new, carousel yeah. and all that. That's oh, the new, carousel, the new carousel is in Terminal 2. I thought it was still the old Terminal. Yeah. Well, anyway, look, I haven't traveled yeah, yeah, for a long yeah, time. Okay. That, that, so that, I don't know what I don't know what you see when you're coming in. These days, I only see departure. And that's departure to Kumasi. Let me go to George. George, would you say maybe the communication machinery have done injustice to the government. Because the communication has now become very defensive. So instead of like uh, informing me what you've done as a citizen, it's like you're defending yourself as to what you've done because maybe the information came too late. And I keep saying, look, there's a road linking uh, Elwak mm -hmm. all the way you know, through sort of uh, airport hills and it comes up to uh, Flowerport Junction yeah to go into East Lagos, it's like top secret. Well, Nana, it is not like top secret. It's like, I mean, Sydney says, 
you know, we have different shades of people in this country. Mm. And, and sometimes because of a certain history, somebody like him decides that I, I don't want to watch a, 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 a national television. Mm. So he doesn't get the opportunity to learn these things at first hand. For instance, I, 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 I used to think when we are, sometimes I ask ourselves, are we not communicating well enough? Yeah. But I always come back to say, I think we are. This is one president who occasionally will go on a regional radio station, for instance, and tout all these things that we are doing. No, we receive calls in. We, we, we consistently, like you said, show documentaries. We have, I mean, we've, the president has gone on visitations to uh, places, it's commissioned projects, and yet people still think that, you know, and it, we are not doing enough. What I'm saying is this, we are on a progressive scale, you know. I will be the first to admit that we want to see a certain Ghana. We started from somewhere. We are going the, 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 the other way. I mean, we haven't gotten full scale full steam yet. But what we want to show by this book is that, look, contrary to what you think, mm -hmm. we've made tremendous progress. <clears throat> okay? And the president himself has always admitted there's, there's more room for improvement. But I'm happy that at least this book has come, and at least Sydney can look in there and identify. For me, it's even more, it's even more exciting because I can say to you with an authority that Maybe it's only 55% of what has been done that we find in this book. In actual fact, there's a huge chunk out there that for maybe it's pacing. And this is only like a sample, sampling of things that we are doing in various districts and various, various regions. We have about the communication ministry is about to start a second phase of G4P, the government for the people, where we go to districts and regional capitals and showcase what we are doing. So the communication is consistent, you, you, you know. I mean, and the president has raised some of these things, the state of the nation address. Let, let me read. You know, all these things have been continuous. But maybe also, maybe some people, like I said, some people have decided that, look, that is not where we want to look. Our interest is in different places. So we are, we are there and we are looking at the negatives only. Let, let, let me, let me take know, a couple but, of messages yeah. and then I'll come back to you. And then what I want to find uh, from you, Sydney, is that if all these things are going on, then why are we saying there are no jobs? I mean, there's thousands of jobs going on. By now, we should be importing labor from Togo, Burkina Faso, because so why are we saying we don't have jobs when all these are going on? But let me just catch up with a few messages. This one says, good, eve, uh, Nana, good evening to you and your panelists. It's amazing uh, that Ghana is heading towards this, the old socialist system. No wonder some of us still appreciate the writings of George Orwell. Uh, now people who preach, uh, people who preaches all Ghanaians are equal, now living in lo uh, luxurious and ex at the expense of the poor man on the street. Gilbert Sherman saying from the Elembele constituency. Let's go to the next one. And it says, oh, the messages are coming in thick and fast. Hello. It says, hi, Nana. If projects are not undertaken, the MPP and its allies will complain. Now they are real projects, but they are now saying it cost, the costs are being inflated. Fire burn them. Uh, Mr. Kingsley Hayford, <laughs> Mr. Kingsley, fire burn them. Fire burn Mr. Kingsley Hayford professionally for finding it difficult to appreciate JM's success. He's more of MPP than a Ghanaian. From Samuel Basse Robinson, uh, Kwame Dansu in BA. Let me go back and get another one. Uh, this one says, "What all? Uh, what what at all is Sydney's point? Is oh. is he still listening to himself, struggling to commend the achievement because he used uh, he's used to seeing nothing good being done by this government?" This is from Agbefia uh, I, I I, I in Koko. Agbefia. Agbefia in Koko. Uh, let me go back and get another one before I come back to studio. Uh, this one says, uh, it's amazing how desperate <clears throat> the president and his administration are. All he said was laced with, we will, we shall, in the process, etc. My president's speech are seriously flat. 
and uninspiring. This is Ni uh, This is says, uh, da, 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 da. Uh, is low suggesting that 50% of what they are doing is not captured in the book? Then why did the president account uh, halfway? This is me. Let me come back to you uh, and find out. Why, why is there so much job? Is it because, I mean, because I mean, these are jobs. So why are people touting saying, where are they looking? Yeah, but we, first of all, I think you should allow me to tell the person who says fire will burn me mm -hmm. for no reason. I'm only saying what I'm saying. And in fact, today of all days, you I started off and I'm saying the book. this is good. <coughs> and this is worth it. And this is this if 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 this is what they are doing, then I expect an MPP government to also come back and do better. Okay, yeah. And I've said that. Hmm. So to whoever it is who said fire burn me, you too fire burn you. <laughs> Because you've commended uh, the because book. Because I've commended the book. <laughs> okay. And as for, as for Agbifi, I don't know what she's going on about. Because, you know, um, they're not, you see, sometimes, a lot of the time, um, people don't want to listen to you. And this is the heart of the problem. They, they, they form an opinion of you, all right? And, and despite your objectivity and your uh, attempt to, you know, see yeah, things clearer and to dissect it, because of course of time, mm, I should hold fire. Let's hold fire and let's move on to find out why there's so much... People okay. complain about jobs you, and there's you, so much work going on. You pointed out the disconnect. Yeah. You asked George, why, why do you, how can you have all this? And then you have so many complaints with intake into schools. Yeah. You still have huge job unemployment. Uh, 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 pe people are still struggling yeah. to, to, make a, to make a living. And it is reflecting in the economy as we go forward. Now, I've asked the question many, many times. I said, with all the borrowing that government has done over the period of time, where has the money been put? Okay. Oh, now, go. I can sit back and I can see, okay, this makes sense, all right? Even if you've got to borrow 200 billion CDs, as, uh, it, it's the, as the number that is being, being bandied around, it would have been good if you could, we could have had some figure comparison to see how close we have come to accounting for all that expenditure that we have. But I, I am clear in my financial analysis that a lot of the money that we have borrowed mm -hmm. has gone to pay debt and has gone to pay recurrent expenditures and salaries. And a lot of done projects. All right? mm -hmm. But, you see, here it is. The amount of money that is, uh, is shown, all right, both in the budget and in the physical quarterly reporting by the Ministry of Finance, shows that the budget on infrastructure is dwindling. The amount of money being spent on infrastructure is dwindling, not going up. All right? And so the question has to be brought back again, that if that is the statistic that we are seeing, then we have a disconnect. And it is this is the disconnect we need to interrogate, those of us who want to be objective, to really sit back and say, all right, so is it, the, is it that the, 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 the number reporting is inaccurate? Is it that we're not capturing everything? Or am I missing a piece of the jigsaw that is not enabling me to figure out where this is all going? If we have spent a billion CDs, all right, to do all of this, or, 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 or as you say, maybe only half of it, and there's more to come, then I would like to be rest assured that when I look at all these projects and I look at the costs of these projects to date, then I will be able to ascertain whether or not we have actually spent the money in the right direction. This is not a value for money assessment. It's got nothing to do with impact assessment either. This is simply a reflection from the NDC side of what they say they have achieved all this time. So the, 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 the visible things for me that I can see, uh, uh, the, 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 uh, the uh, Kwame Nkrumah uh, uh, interchange which is going on, the Sofo line, and strangely enough, Sofo line is not in there, mm -hmm. uh, which surprised me because I thought Sofo line being about 95% complete would have been, should have been a big uh, uh, issue. The Kasua, Interchange. Interchange is not there. Uh, the buses for the bus rapid transport are in, the, are in, are in there, yeah. but the bus rapid transport road itself is not completed. And this is where maybe my cynical self asks the question, so why come and tell me about all these buses you have procured for the bus rapid transport where you haven't even done the, the bus rapid transport route? So where is the achievement? Is the achievement in buying a bus? Because as for buying a bus, any Tom Dick and requirement can buy a bus. Do you see where I'm coming from? So for me, buying a bus and telling me you have acquired 370 buses for the bus rapid transport system is not an achievement. It's not an achievement. It's a simple thing. It's not complicated. 
if you've got the letter of credit or you've got a line of credit or you've got the cash, you can buy a bus. But if you actually put the road down, if you do the road network, if you create that road network and make it easy for people to move from Kaswa all the way to Accra in about 27, 37 minutes, then you have done something for me. That begins to make sense. If you're able to complete the, uh, the, the, the overhead pass between Obechabi Lamte uh, uh, roundabout all the way through to the Kwame Nkrumah Circle, onto the Ring Road, down to Dankwa Circle, I can see that. All right? It's akin to doing the George Bush Highway and taking me all the way there to Tetekwashi. Then I can see that my life has improved because in the past, it used to take me three and a half hours to get home when I come to Accra, to get to McCarthy Hill. All right? Now, if I leave... If I leave Accra let me, let me at the just, same time at 11, 11 p.m. Just one second. Hey, Nana, is that Kingsley? Thanks to him for lauding the government. Greetings to Honorable. <laughs> you see, but you see, but, but you see, I've, I've never, I've never, I've never not been objective. You know, for me, if it's right, it's right. If it's wrong, it's wrong. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to see too many right things about what government has done because my focus is the economy and finance. And on that, I think this government has failed abysmally. And I won't hesitate to say that. If we're talking about the economy now, right now we're talking about construction and development. Mm -hmm. And we're looking at, you know, uh, 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 things that have been, been completed. I have no problem with it. But the minute we start talking about good governance, we start talking about the economy, I have a problem. Because me, I think on those fronts, NDC hasn't done very well. Let, let me read this one and then quickly go on the phone and speak to David Agbe. Now this one says, Nana, read my messages, please. So I'm going to read it. It says, interesting times. List millions of our phantom projects and tickle your waste and we will vote you out. Building schools, clinics, roads, etc. Yet our CD economy is not doing well. It's not, uh, and CD is not doing well. It's not an achievement. This is uh, uh, Somalia from uh, Wedana. Somalia, you can't get it all. You know, win some, lose some. But let me go to the line and then speak to David Agbe, who's a government expert. Hello, David, you're welcome. Uh, then I thank you so much for the opportunity. I've been watching you closely uh, all the time. Well, thank you. <laughs> thank you. <coughs> let, let me get your preliminary comments on our, on our book, Accounting uh, to the People, Changing Lives, Transforming Ghana. Yes, no, no, I, I must say that uh, what the president did yesterday, mm -hmm. um, I think, is good in terms of good governance purposes. Yeah. I do believe that you know sincerely that at the time that West Africa sub-region, we were having authoritarian governance or totalitarian governance, mm -hmm. uh, we do not see our president to be accountable because information always flows from the top. Mm -hmm. But as soon as you transit it into a democratic government, one of the pillars that we use to measure precedent is about the fact that the president needs to be accountable and needs to be very transparent in terms of making sure that all of his activities, he needs to communicate to his citizens. And to communicate to your citizens and your electorate, you need to let the people understand what you have done for them, what you are doing for their survival or their welfare. And the third one is about what you intend doing, which is futuristic. So in terms of democratic governance mm -hmm. and communication to your electorate or your citizens, these are the preambles that government needs to do all over the world if you respect democracy. You need to let your people understand what you are doing, what you intend doing, and what you have done. So on that score, I would say that, yes, the president has done a good job. Okay. I, mean, I mean, I remember in 2008, thereabout, the president then, our current president, criticized the MPP at that time that if you are doing some of these things, it is a sign of mediocrity, which I disagree sincerely with the president. That at that point in time, the president failed by not communicating very well. Okay. But as, you know, having studied political communication, I could say that what he did yesterday, he was doing a purely political communication. And that is what has been done in other developed and developing countries. So 
I will call the president that, yes, this is what we expect from him to do to let him be accountable to the citizens of the Republic of Ghana, those people who voted for him or people who do not even vote for him. They need to see what he has done, you know, in terms of infrastructure development, hospitals, schools, and other facilities which citizens want it to be visible, such that the money that the president has collected through taxes from the people, he is being accountable to them. All the loans that he has secured from abroad, mm -hmm. he is trying to be accountable to the citizens that, yes, I use the name of Ghana on behalf of the country. I've solicited loans from abroad here and there. This is what I've used all those loans to do. These are what I've used your taxes in doing for you to ensure that I am putting up certain infrastructure in Accra, in the Bronahapu, in the eastern region, in the northern region, and, and all over. So I think that the president has done so well mm -hmm. that in terms of economic management, I would say that that is where, I mean, the president has not communicated very well to the citizens of Ghana as to how he is trying to manage the entire economy. Uh, thank you very much, David. Uh, thank you for, you know, that, just sharing that insight there. I'll come to studio and go to George. George, uh, do, do you run the risk of, you know, because of the economy, CD, because of doom so, so all the hard work you know, goes into water because of this, you know, thing. So it's like... Uh, well, we will not, uh, and I will not pretend that uh, doom so is an issue, and I think the president consistently uh, mm -hmm. acknowledges that. And we will not pretend that we've had issues with the, the economy, particularly in terms of inflows. I mean, our traditional uh, uh, commodities are not doing well. And, and, and as, as people are already talking about the finance minister possibly coming back to parliament, because oil um, crude has dropped so low and, and, and our budget but, but numbers is going to wise, be... But numbers-wise, you, you've gotten more revenues than you know, previous governments. Well, yes, but you know that uh, it's not simply the fact that you have more revenue. It's, it, it, it's of course, what you're using the revenue for and uh, the exigencies of the times. I mean. What we are, we've been getting in 2005 cannot be what we should be getting in, in, in 2015, for instance. Yeah. And, and, and then you do a cost-benefit analysis and, and, and see what has been achieved. Uh, and we are saying that in, in, in spite of the difficulties with the economy, in spite of the difficulties uh, uh, we, on, the, on many other fronts, uh, like the energy front and all, we have been able to achieve, f I mean, far more than many other governments. And, 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 like I keep saying, this book is a clear testimony, a demonstration of what we have been able to achieve, even in spite of the, the difficulty. Let me just go back to what Sidney said. You see, in this book, you will find, for instance, or when the president was doing a presentation, you find, for instance, the Kumasi, uh, the KJTR terminal, the uh, uh, artist that's being pressed. <coughs> what he's telling Ghanaian simply that this is what it's going to look like when it's completed. This is what we started. This is what we want to achieve. He showed circle. Circle is not complete. It's not 100% complete. But he's giving an area view and he's telling you that this is what you should be looking forward to. So I, I think that the communication was in different forms. There are things that we've completed 100% and we've showcased it to Guardians. For instance, the health front. We've shown hospital equipment that we've put across the country. We've shown <coughs> hospitals that are in progress, work in progress. Mm -hmm. And we are just saying consistently that we have had said that we would do certain things. This is what we're doing. This is where we were. This is where we are. This is where we intend to go. For me, that is the consistency in the mm -hmm. communication. Like I keep saying, like, and, and I'm very happy with Sydney because he's confessed that, look, my focus is on the, the, the economic numbers. So possibly I'm not looking at the infrastructural issues. Maybe he travels around the country a lot. He does see mm -hmm. a, few, a, few, a few of the things. I was... I have always, I was telling somebody yesterday that, oh, but even in my constituency alone, if I want to count the pro projects that we've done that are not in this book, multiply that by 275. You, that's why I was saying that we have possibly about 45% of things that have not been captured in this book, or even possibly more. But for me, those are not simplicity the issues. You made mention of uh, uh, jobs, for instance. Mm. The president alluded to it. He said, look, 300 and 
uh, about 364,000 new jobs have been registered by Smith. That should tell you that we are getting somewhere even with job creation. Mm. Now, the president has also said that one of the challenges we do have is that we have, this is a country where Sydney's son finishes uh, uh, SS and the next thing is go to uni. And when you're going to uni, it's like go and do marketing, go and do economics, go and do law, go and do medicine. We haven't in a long time considered technicians, middle level uh, uh, people as, as key to our national development. But indeed, they are key. And so he's saying that, look, through the COVID and other things, we are developing these key skills because we talk about local content. But you can be sure that there are things that we cannot find local expertise here to do. Some of these huge projects that we do. So on, on, on the screen is the KJTM market. Yeah. I mean, and that's psychedelic. Yeah. So, so, so in real terms, we are saying that... Condition. That will be the new KJTM market. Yeah. <coughs> that's, 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 that's what it looks like. Air like conditioned. Like well, it looks like Central air conditioning. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it's like Kutuka well, International Airport. Control, control yeah. So, so, so you, 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 you see that uh, the vision is big. Mm. And, and, and we all must I mean, the market all... might be shy to go and sell their wares in there. <laughs> you, you know, and, I mean, it's nice. I'm commending. Yeah, and, 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 and we are trying to, try to modernize all our markets. You go to Ho, they are doing some work. You go to Cape Coast, go to Crab, they are doing some work. You know, uh, they are doing some work in Kumasi. They are doing work in different places. What yeah, we need Nana, to do is... Yeah. Okay, oh, David, let's come I in. I David and left, actually. <laughs> yes. No, no, I think that my, my colleague is, is making a good argument. Uh -huh. But the reality is that Government communicators, government machinery, mm -hmm. in terms of communicating creatively to Ghanaians, uh, they, they, they perform abysmally. They will not be able to help the president at all. And in terms of communication, I do remember vividly, in 2008, you could hear personalities like Honorable Hanatete, you could hear Fifi Kwete, mm -hmm. and you could hear Honorable Harun Ezrisu, when they are talking, when they are communicating, you will see a sense of vibration and in, in terms of communicating very well, effectively, to, 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 to win a certain sympathy from Ghanaians. Mm -hmm. But the type of communication that the party has as we speak, I, I mean, I, I would say that they are not doing a, a, a good work for the president. And that is why many people see the president as, you know, suffering in, in terms of of the fact that all the time the, the president becomes the first person who will come and explain and articulate his own vision and, and all that. So you could realize that there is a certain level of dis dysfunction as far as party communication is, is concerned. And that is what they need to work at. Although we do appreciate that in public governance, the president is the chief bureaucrat. The president is the spokesperson. For, for, for and on behalf of the country. But it is not everything that the president has to come and explain. The party functionary, their communicators, need to come out to articulate what the president is doing and to be able to follow up and measure. But they are not doing that. So there are a lot of things that the government communicators need to do to be able to advance and help their own president. David, thank you. They are not able to do that. People will bring the president for not being performing very Thank you very much, David. I need to take a break here and come back and quickly round up. Uh, the show is getting exciting. The time is running away from us. We're going to take a quick break and we are coming soon. Thank you very much for staying. Very interesting conversation. Uh, let me read this uh, message. Uh, Ghanaian should thank God for giving us somebody like John Mahama as a president at the time the country is in this crisis. Anybody else would have resigned and left the country by now. John is a man of integrity, a man we can rely on to prosecute the better Ghana agenda that he has promised the good people of Ghana. Al Hassan in Gaulu, but from Wa. If you find yourself in a confined place, uh, you may not be aware of some of the development projects going on in some part of the country. Move out and find out from others, or find from others to tell you what's happening elsewhere uh, in Ghana. MPP people think that Ghana is about Accra <coughs> and Kumasi alone. It goes beyond that. Uh, if you, were, you are never grateful to whatever this government is doing. But good people of Ghana are watching 
And uh, you cannot make the NDC government ungovernable. God is watching us all. Again, yes. Al Hassan in Wa, but from Galu. Uh, let me just take one more and then come back to the studio. Uh, this is this. And now all those presentations mean nothing to the people of Brongahafu, Upper East and Wa, when their monies are locked up in investment companies and government silent as if they are unaware about it. I am not sure of where you're going, but let me come to studio and try and round up. Very to me, yeah, we only have about a minute or so. Yeah, um, look, I, I, I'm saying that when you do things like this, you are improving the governance of this country. Mm -hmm. when, you, when you put out a book of this character, you are definitely taking democracy a big step forward. And, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. It lifts up the whole society, it lifts up our whole political discourse. However, I think we should be careful, and I'm going to probably find time to really sit with this book because I've only just glanced at it. But if, if we find too much of what you find on page 127, second picture from the top, as has been portrayed here, then I think we have to be careful whether or not every picture in here is authentically sensible and useful or not. Page 127, second picture from the top. If Nana will read the caption, it says, Spider plowed used in lane eastern corridor optic fiber. Well, what's wrong with that? <laughs> what development work is that? Well, I mean, the, the fiber optic thing was a big, was a big issue. No, uh, the picture is of the machine. Another fiber optic thing. Another fiber optic thing. But to thing. prove that the machine was there to lay the fiber <laughs> the thing. Let me... No, you see, <laughs> all this depicts is very simple. It's saying that, yes, we have done fiber optics, mm -hmm. but we did not just do anything. Mm -hmm. We no, used the most modern sorry. way of I doing. don't have a problem with yeah, that, so, so basically, the picture is to communicate that we have... That we used the machine to yeah, pull the fiber Yeah, we've moved on. Cable. I mean, we are not just... Uh, I mean, in, in doing this project, we use the best technology available mm -hmm. in today. Uh, type. And that is, and we should count oh, that as an achievement. Of course, uh, Sydney. I would see, have been happier if you had used two thousand people and paid them and see, pulled the see, cable see, by uh, hand uh, uh, and paid uh, them well, uh, so they would have some Sydney. money to spend. Sydney. You're asking, I, I you're asking you where, made, you're asking you made, where the I think disconnect you made is. The point when you say that there are various ways of looking at this. Sure. So, so for me, this book is telling you what is on the ground, and I think that that is the argument. Round it up for me, but. Again, I want to say that I agree with Sidney when he says this is good. This tells a story. George, before we run up, did, yeah. you, did you vote yes to that stickers on the bus? Because they had to vote. What, what, how did you vote? Which, which? You know, the, the, the branding of the bus. The, well, you didn't have to vote for the branding of the bus. No, but that, that part, did you approve that part? Well, buses came in. They had to be branded. They do not come to Parliament to say... We are about to brand buses. Vote. Osei oh. Chairman has raised objections. Yes. What did you he, say? Did you no. support him? Wait, wait a minute. What Osei Chairman Sambosu did yeah. was to take another report, which is not the report to do with the bus at all. We'll the, petroleum we'll funds, the, bus. the petroleum fund funds. report. And it says in that report, some amount of money has been quoted to have been used in the branding. So the, you would have found that Mr. Speaker says that, look. Do you agree with the, the amount on that branding? Well, what we are saying is that we don't even know about how much was used because the minister herself says she has to come and she check. has to go and check. So and I can't sit here and talk about <coughs> all too, all too soon. Our time is up, but when they come back and check, we'll definitely do a show about that branding on the bus. But tomorrow, don't miss that's my opinion. Evangelist Nana and Sakwa. Can you imagine that's the topic for tomorrow? Evangelist Nana and Sakwa, 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. on uh, Joy 99.7 FM. Tune in and listen to that's my opinion. But tomorrow, we'll be back to do this all over again. And guys, thank you so much. You're welcome.